I know I've said this before, I really do feel bad for the younger generation. I know ignorance is bliss. They don't know any better. They only know what they've been exposed to. But this generation has been robbed of quality entertainment. Pick the medium. It doesn't matter. Sports opinion shows. Garbage. You tune into ESPN during the day, you're more likely to see Max Kellerman crying about his white privilege than seeing an in-depth interview with Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. Movies. Trash. When I was growing up, when I was growing up, there was a plethora of classic movies in every genre. Goodfellas, Casino, Friday, American Pie. Disney even made some good movies. When I was in elementary school, every kid was talking about the Mighty Ducks or the Sandlot. Music. <sighs> Music. Does this even need to be explained? There is no such thing as timeless music anymore. Most of these modern artists, they have zero talent. I didn't get much sleep last night. The dog woke me up about one o'clock this morning with her emergency bark telling me, hey, wake up, I gotta take a shit. I let her outside for a few minutes. She comes back in. I think all is well. Long story short, she ended up getting sick, barfing all over my bed. I was doing laundry at two o'clock this morning, taking care of a sick puppy. Since I couldn't sleep, I fell into the YouTube trap for hours, started watching classic performances from artists with actual talent. Queen at Live Aid, Guns N' Roses performing at the VMA's November Rain, I think it was 92 or 93. Mariah Carey, Luther Vandross, Mariah Carey, Boys to Men, Elton John. All of these artists who created music that is timeless, shit you can still listen to today, and it's like you're hearing it for the very first time. This generation, they don't have that. And finally, TV shows. Now, there are some great shows produced today, but it's just not the same. When is the last time a television show was massively popular in the mainstream? When I say massively popular, I'm talking like Friends, Seinfeld, ER, 10, 20, 30 million viewers every week. Now, I know the medium of television's changed, but so has the quality of television being produced. Many networks, they have allowed themselves to be overtaken with the woke fungus. You can make the case no show has been more infected and therefore more affected by the woke fungus than Saturday Night Live. SNL, it used to be the starting point for aspiring comedians and actors. Lorne Michaels is responsible for launching the careers of dozens of Hollywood legends. Chevy Chase, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, Chris Rock, Tina Fey, Will Ferrell. It used to be viewed as an honor to join the cast. Today, I would be embarrassed to be a part of this garbage. The show used to have one goal, make people laugh. That was it. It was that simple. Over the last several years, Lorne Michaels, he has adjusted the purpose of SNL. It's no longer about satire, making fun of celebrities and politicians, all politicians, so they could entertain their audience. It didn't matter if you were Republican or Democrat, common sense thinker or butt brigader, fried food fanatic or cucumber connoisseur. It didn't matter. SNL was going to go after you. Unfortunately, the legacy of Saturday Night Live has been tainted because a show once dedicated to sketch comedy is now dedicated to propaganda. It is no longer about eliciting laughter. It's now about eliciting woke boners. Last weekend was the season premiere of Saturday Night Live. Leading up to the premiere, Lorne Michaels was interviewed by the New York Times. When the New York Times mentions the fact that your show is woker than Skippy Bebe on Woke Wiener Wednesday, you have a serious problem. Both times Lorne Michaels was asked about the political imbalance of his dump, he refused to answer the question. Instead of giving an answer to the New York Times, Lorne Michaels, he decided to use the cold open to address the imbalance and the complete lack of comedy on Saturday Night Live. Watch for yourself. There are a lot of changes at the show which could be exciting. Let's see what they spent the entire summer coming up with. Okay, we got an establishing shot of Mar-a-Lago. Oh, good. Trump sketch. Way to mix it up. Hello, I'm Governor Christy Noem, and I want to take your abortion rights. What the hell was that? The governor of South Dakota. 
a political impression that no one asked for. I gotta point out, where's the balance politically? They're making Trump Columbus jokes. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's lost his damn marbles. Hopefully that didn't get removed for copyright reasons, but just in case it did, the cold open, it made reference to Joe Biden once by saying that he lost his marbles. The rest of the sketch, it was making fun of Donald Trump and Christy Nome. But KC, I am sure they made fun of Joe Biden throughout the rest of the show. SNL is notorious for making fun of presidents. Yeah, they used to be, but not last weekend and not anymore. I'll be honest, I didn't watch the show last weekend. Watching SNL has become too painfully boring for me to sit through it for 90 minutes. I am basing this information off of media reviews. Neither Joe Biden or Kamala Harris were mentioned once during the season premiere. SNL writers have been on break since the middle of May. They've had four months, four fucking months, to come up with something that closely resembled comedy. Now, I don't consider myself to be a comedian, but I'm told all the time that part of the appeal to this channel is the comedy and satire. It takes me two, sometimes three hours to prepare for these videos before I record. I am not a professional writer. I don't have some fancy degree from Woke U telling me how to not be funny. In two or three hours, I come up with this material. SNL writers had four months and they could not think of one comedic sketch about Joe Biden? Not one? It's not like he hasn't given them plenty of material. People who immigrate to this country they don't think Joe Biden is the president. They think he's a fucking comedian. Take a look at this compilation. All of this has happened during the SNL summer break. Roll the film. That can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him in uh, foot, foot, Excuse me. And I want to thank all of you here for including bipartisan elected officials like Representative Governor, Senator Braun, Senator Booker, Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here to help make this a reality. You see, because of new life-saving knowledge to be gained that must be used for progress of all people, end of quote. Maybe I'm being too hard on SNL writers. I'm sure they were very busy this summer, marching in the butt bongo band at gay gay pride parades, having their annual 4th of July celebration, roasting woke wieners over a climate friendly fire, getting in their final rounds of Fauci fucking before the lizard gets neutered into retirement. I mean, it was a busy summer for the shit fucks. But even with that being the case, they could have dug into their archives and used some of cackling Kamala's greatest hits. So the United States shares a very important relationship, which is an alliance with the Republic of North Korea. The governor and I, and we were all um, doing a tour of the library here and um, talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time when we think about a day in the life of our children. It is our um, lowest income communities and our communities of color that are most impacted by these extreme conditions and, and impacted by, by issues that are not of their own making. And, and so women. we, absolutely. And so we have to address this in a way that is about giving resources based on equity, understanding that we, we fight for equality, but we also need to fight for equity, understanding not everyone starts out at the same place. Someone get this birthing person a residency in Las Vegas. This unconfirmed woman is funnier than 90% of the comedians out there. She's a hell of a lot funnier than the garbage presented every week on SNL. 20 years ago, hell, 10 years ago, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they would have been roasted on Saturday Night Live. This would have been the cold open. Instead, SNL, they run back to the same routine of Orange Man Bad. Donald Trump, Christine Ohm, 
Herschel Walker, Mitch McConnell. Those were the targets of SNL this past weekend. Three of them have something in common. They're a threat to the woke movement. Then you have Mitch McConnell, who is a threat to eyesight. Stare at that face for too long, you risk becoming blind. When I see Mitch McConnell, I can't figure out if I'm looking at an old man's face or an old wrinkled ass. Both holes serve the same purpose. Shit. When I was a regular viewer of SNL in the late 90s, early 2000s, even the early 90s, early to mid-90s, the show averaged between 8-10 million viewers every week. During the Trump presidency, when late night television across the board was diagnosed with Orange Man Bad, SNL was averaging 11 million viewers. Throughout their nearly 50-year history, Saturday Night Live has averaged between 5 and 8% market share, meaning on Saturday night at 11.30, 5 to 8% of TVs in America watching SNL. Last year, the season premiere set record low ratings, 4.9 million viewers, down 35% from 2020. Now, in keeping with tradition, the season finale back in May set another record low, 4.6 million. Season premiere last weekend, 4 million. But that's okay. We are going to bounce back this week. We have Brendan Gleeson hosting the show and Willow Smith as the musical guest. Who and who? What was their name? Brendan, it doesn't matter what their name is. The show's going to suck. The writing is dreadful. The cast is full of unknowns. Outside of Kenan Thompson, most people can't name a cast member on SNL. And what the hell's with Kenan Thompson? I don't have anything against him, but he has clearly missed the memo. SNL, it's like that starter job out of college, the company that hires young graduates and recycles them every two or three years. Kenan Thompson's been on this show so long, most of these newcomers, they weren't even fucking born when he started on the show. Dude, you're supposed to use SNL to propel your career. It's not supposed to become your career. This show is in desperate, desperate need of change. And when I say change, I'm talking Lorne Michaels has got to get the fuck out of there. He's too woke. He's too old. Once you reach a certain age, it is incredibly difficult to relate to a younger audience. Happened to Vince McMahon. Happened to Howard Stern. If NBC wants to save SNL, they have got to step in and force Lorne Michaels the fuck out. Let me know what you think. The season premiere of Saturday Night Live sets record low ratings. Would pushing Lorne Michaels out be enough to save this show, or has the woke fungus infected it beyond repair? Do any of you guys even watch this garbage anymore? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.